We talk about the appetite, the risk appetite out there amongst investors and the growth that we've seen in private credit, private equity. This has to be a good time to be in this business. Uh, this is a golden age of this business, I would say, and I've been in the business longer than I want to recount, 30 years at Crescent, mm -hmm. uh, co-founding it. And before that, I uh, worked for Mike Milken on yeah. the trading desk at Drexel. Yeah. So uh, in 35 years, we've never seen opportunity like this, yeah. I would say. And, and so I, I think it's more than just risk appetite. I think it's opportunity. We'll talk about why the opportunity today, or at least the way investors view it today, is different than what it was 30, 35 years ago. Well, 30, 35 years ago, the technology was nascent. In fact, uh, Mike and our group invented it. Mm -hmm. Technology has been refined extensively, and, and the apparatus, the capital market systems now, are way more developed. Back in the 1980s, we had a, a party on the trading desk when the market hit $50 billion in size. Wow. Every market we would talk about today is the trillion-dollar number. Dry powder in private equity, public high-yield bond market, widely syndicated bank loan market, and now the direct lending market, or private lending market as well, yeah. has got about a trillion dollars of capital. Yeah, I mean, 50 billion in size is nothing. I mean, that's the size of, of, a, of a firm these days. I am curious, though, when you look at the size and the scale of this industry here, do you need to be big now? I mean, this used to be an industry dominated by relatively niche players. Do you need that scale now to be profitable and to attract the capital? I think you need to be big, there's a little bit of an arms race. Mm -hmm. Some of that is earnings related. We're a private firm, so we're not you know, subject to those concerns. But you, you needed to address the size of transactions. We re recently had several Unitron transactions mm -hmm. above $2 billion. So to participate in that, you've got to be able to write a $500 million check. In order to provide uh, capital to private equity firms, as well as to access to transactions for your investors, you have to have scale. Why do you see so many corporations now, particularly public corporations, turning now to private equity, private debt? Is there sort of a sense here that more of these corporations feel that they have more flexibility in doing it this way rather than relying on the public markets? I think there's flexibility and there's also an ability to create a bespoke solution for all constituencies mm -hmm. and, and also to deal with certain pro forma numbers. A lot of what we're seeing today in, in all the markets is about growth, mm -hmm. and it's, it's hard with public transactions to talk about growth in mm -hmm. terms of specific metrics and giving projections, you can provide projections in private markets. How much of this is being fueled by the current state of monetary policy, fiscal policy? Oh, no doubt. Uh, global low interest rates, you still have a negative interest rate in Germany, for example, mm -hmm. and, and you know, very accommodating uh, fiscal policy is, is a backdrop for this. Anytime the Fed kind of whispers that they're going to tighten, uh, you see the wall of worry increase and, you know, the markets trade off. And we really are relying on robust markets. Mm -hmm. There was a, this in the last quarter, $1.6 trillion of M&A activity. That's, mm -hmm. that's a function of confidence, confidence in the markets, right. confidence that CEOs have to do transactions. Does some normalization of monetary policy, does that change that robustness? I think normalization is always a good thing, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that the Fed is going to be measured. I think there's a lot of ways they're trying to talk the market, you know, to a normal place without actually making moves. Of course, at, at some point now they've signaled they're going to do something, and, and one of these days they actually will. A lot of the appetite, though, for junior debt, subordinated debt, has been because of at least the perception here that there was a backstop out there, uh, whether it's implicit by the Fed or whether uh, just broader market forces would be there to sort of backstop it. How does that change here if the Fed does, say, taper and then eventually start raising rates? Well, as they taper, you're going to start to see interest rates rise. Uh, most of the private lending that we and, and our you know, colleagues do at other firms, uh, most of that has a floating rate component, so mm -hmm. our returns will just get higher. Mm -hmm. The challenge will be if rates get too high, it'll start to dampen the free cash flow in companies. We still have the highest free cash flow coverages in 30 years at Crescent when we look at our leverage deals. We're going through a transition away from LIBOR eventually. We've actually seen a couple of deals already with SOFR pegged to some of these leverage loans. What do you make of that transition? How, how well is it going? I think the transition's gone well because it's so uh, well signaled. Mm -hmm. You know, LIBOR doesn't disappear in some cases till early 23 if you look at short-term LIBOR. Mm -hmm. And at least in all of Crescent's documents, we provide for 
uh, a transition and, and a, more importantly, a floor. Yeah. So we have a, a fixed floor in every one of our deals. So whatever the, the underlying benchmark is, we know there's a minimum spread we're, uh, that yeah. we're going to achieve. Real quickly here, Mark, of course, you are the co-owner of the Milwaukee Brewers. They came up a little bit short this year. <laughs> what are we going to expect next year? World Series? Yeah, so, uh, you know, no tears in baseball. If you'd asked me three, three days ago, I'd be weeping on your air here. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, virtually everybody returning, and uh, we're very excited about that. Very dominant pitching uh, for the first time in 51 years at the team. Yeah. Uh, dominant to this extent, record dominance, and so we're looking to be back in the playoffs next year.